So in this example, we're going to look at the electric potential between parallel charge planes. So I give you three planes of charge. The top one has charge density plus sigma. The second one is plus two sigma. The third one is minus sigma. And they are separated by distances d and d. And you'll notice a little triangle symbol at the bottom. That is a ground symbol, which means the bottom plate is at potential zero. And I ask, what is the electric potential at the location of the middle plane? So we know from Gauss's law that the electric field produced by an infinite charge plane is just E equals sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. So we can use superposition to determine the electric field in all regions of space. And then we can convert that electric field to electric potential. So let's get started. Starting with the top plane, we notice that the electric field is sigma over 2 epsilon naught. If we're above the plane, it points upwards, and if we're below the plane, it points downwards. If we look at the second plane, uh, the directions are the same. Above the plane, it points up. Below the plane, it points down. But now it's going to be 2 sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught, which cancels to sigma over epsilon naught. If we look at the third plane, we notice it's sigma over 2 epsilon naught in magnitude, just like the first plane, but now the direction is different. If we're above the plane, it points down. If we're below the plane, it points up. And so the total electric field in each region of space is just the sum of those three components in each region. So I went through the math and calculated them out, and we noticed that the very top has sigma over epsilon naught pointing up, followed by zero, followed by two sigma over epsilon naught pointing down, and followed by sigma over epsilon naught pointing down. So now we want to find out what the potential is at the middle plate. And we notice that we can use the equation, the change in voltage is equal to minus the path integral e dot dl, right? So first I draw in my path. My path will start at the very bottom plate and go up to the middle plate. I notice that since it's a dot product, I can expand it as magnitude of e times the magnitude of dl times the cosine of the angle between them. We notice that the electric field is pointing down and the path is pointing up, so the angle between them is 180 degrees or pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1. And we also notice that in that region of space, the electric field is constant, so we can pull it out of the integral. And so we're left with the path integral of dl, which just simplifies to d, since that is the distance between the plates. And so the change in voltage is ed, meaning that the voltage of the middle plate is just equal to the voltage of the bottom plate plus the change in voltage, or 2 sigma d divided by epsilon naught. So we notice here that sometimes many little steps are a lot easier to solve for than one giant step, and that's what we did. First we found the electric fields, then we found the potentials. Uh, you'll also notice that once we use Gauss's law to find an electric field for a charge distribution, we do not have to repeat that process every single time. That's what we did for the charge planes. We already knew what it was, so we just used that in this problem. And finally, a little parting thought. At the very end, when I was calculating the potential, did we ignore the top plate? Um, I'll give you a hint, we did not ignore the top plate. Uh, it did come into our analysis earlier in the problem.